on rules, privileges, and elections. Before we be begin, I would like to introduce the members of this rules committee present. First, we are honored to be joined, well, no, we're not, he's not here yet. <laughs> I want to introduce uh, Minority Leader Steve Matteo, Council Member Adrian Adams, Council Member Margaret Chin, Council Member Mark Traeger, Council Member Margaret, I said Margaret Chin already. And uh, as we go along, we'll be joined by other members of the committee. And before we begin, I want to introduce the uh, staff, the council, to the committee and the staff. I would like to acknowledge Elizabeth Guzman, who's the council to this committee. I would also like to acknowledge the staff members from the council's investigative unit, Chuck D Davis, chief of compliance officer, and Andre Johnson Brown. First, we will consider and vote on the nomination by the mayor of Mr. Stephen Kess for appointment to the New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission. We will then consider and vote on the nomination by the Queensborough president of Mr. Now, I never called you by this name. I know you very well. Adashram Raj Rampashad for appointment as a member of the New York City Planning Commission. The New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission, known as the TLC, was created pursuant to Local Law 12 of 1971. Chapter 65 of the New York City Charter establishes the TLC with the goal of developing and improving taxi and limousine service in New York City. TLC is responsible for overall transportation policy. The commission establishes certain rates, standards, and criteria for the licensing of vehicles, drivers, chauffeurs, owners, and operators. The commission includes nine members appointed by the mayor with the advice and consent of the council. TLC must include at least one member from each borough. TLC members are appointed for a term of seven years and can serve until the appointment and qualifications of a successor. <coughs> <coughs> the mayor designates one TLC member to act as the chair and chief executive officer. The chair has the power to employ, assign, and oversee the officers and employees of the organization. Pursuant to the charter, the chair's position is full-time and the mayor sets compensation. The chair currently receives $212,044 annually. No other TLC member receives compensation. Should all TLC and all documents and records in its possession are public records. TLC must also submit an annual report to the council on or before the second Monday of January. Should candidate Kess be appointed to the TLC, he will fill a vacancy and serve for the remainder of a seven-year term that expires on January 31st, 2019. Uh, can we swear in Mr. Kess, please? Welcome, Mr. Kess. Would you please raise your right hand to be sworn in? Do you swear or affirm to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth during this testimony? Thank you. Do you have a statement you'd wish to make? and members of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. My name is Stephen Kest, and I'm grateful to Mayor de Blasio for nominating me to serve as a member of the Taxi and Limousine Commission. The primary reason that I want to serve on the TLC is because I want to be an advocate for the drivers. Um, 
whether they drive yellow cabs, green cabs, or for hire vehicles. The drivers work hard, they don't get paid enough, their expenses are too high, and they deserve a TLC that's looking out for their interests. I know the TLC has to balance the sometimes competing interests of all residents of the city, not just drivers, but also riders and the general public. I'm confident that I'll be sensitive to the variety of constituencies that the TLC is responsible to, but I firmly believe that in the long run, the entire city is better served if we have a well-compensated, stable, and professional core of drivers. My entire career has prepared me for this appointment. For over 35 years, I worked as a community organizer with ACORN, the foremost organization of poor and working people in the country. At ACORN, I helped organize people so they had power to win a better life. ACORN was the leading national organization in fighting for living wages for workers. We also led the fight against abusive and predatory lenders. Both of these campaign areas are relevant to my prospective position at the TLC. After ACORN, I joined the staff of the Service Employees International Union, and for five years, I helped lead the Fight for 15, a national campaign of fast food cooks and cashiers who help win wages of $15 an hour for millions of workers all across the country. I'm currently working as a senior advisor at the Center for Popular Democracy, where I help train and support community organizations in 35 states. Here in New York City, CPD's affiliates and partners include the Working Families Party, Make the Road New York, New York Communities for Change, Vocal, and Churches United for Fair Housing, all organizations that are working to advance the interests of low and moderate income New Yorkers. My firm belief is that taxi, FHV drivers, and commuter vans, like all workers, dri drivers, like all workers, are best served by organizing. My pledge to you as a prospective TLC member is that I'll listen closely to the voices of the drivers as expressed through their organizations like the Taxi Workers Alliance and the Independent Drivers Guild, along with any other organizations the drivers organize and support. In particular, I plan to study the proposals that have been put forth by the TLC and by members of this council that are designed to raise wages for the drivers. At first glance, these proposals represent significant advances and as I learn more about them and about the concerns of the drivers, I hope I'll be a constructive advocate as these policies are finalized. In conclusion, let me say that I'm honored that the mayor has nominated me to serve on the commission, and I look forward to working closely with members of the council in that capacity. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Um, what safeguards would you recommend to ensure that dishonest taxi drivers do not overcharge riders? Um, that's one of the areas I've, I've heard about, and I hope to look into it and learn more about it once I get on the commission, but that seems an important issue to address. Absolutely. Because I know I take, I take cabs. I do not drive. Yeah. And many times I've gotten into a cab where they don't even put down the meter. They, you know, tell me, they'll say to me how much how much does the ride usually cost? And you know, I will tell them, and I happen to be honest, and I tell them exactly because I take cabs a lot. But that money gets put into their pockets. They don't have to report that money because there's no record of mm. having a passenger. How, how can you address this um, on a whole with you know, the rest of the commissioners. Yeah, no, that seems like an important issue to address. And I, I know that there's an enforcement division at the TLC, and I will um, definitely be focused on issues like that. Okay. Also, the taxi industry is, uh, you know, facing some really tough financial uh, times at this point. Um, and they're missing payments on their loans, and some have even ended their lives because of their financial troubles. What can the TLC or the city do to alleviate some of the financial burdens Medallion owns face? Yeah, no, this, it's been a tragic, tragic situation. I mean, look, I, I've spent all my life as a organizer working to advance the interests of 
poor people, working families. And, and I think that's why I want to serve on the commission, so I can really sort of dig into those issues um, and uh, help craft policies that will address exactly the problems that you're raising. So that's, that's why I want to take on this responsibility. And also to, be, uh, to make sure that the, you know, the people who have, feel that they can come and speak to you know, the commissioners at you know, the times of, of need and maybe get some advice from them. Yeah. And not feel so alone. No, I think absolutely that seems right. Okay, yep. um, any of my colleagues have any? Council Member Chen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Chet, uh, Katz, yeah. welcome. Thank you. Um, looking at your background and from your testimony, um, I'm really excited that uh, if you join the TLC that we have another um, activist voice on there. And from my own personal experience in terms with interacting with the, the chairperson and TLC um, on the commuter van issue. Uh, and I agree with you that organizing is really crucial. We were able uh, to organize the community van, uh, commuter van operators who were operating legally, but, um, and TLC was pushing forth um, this decal to show that these are the official legal vans that have insurance and provide the safety. And because they were able to come into TLC and sit down with TLC staff and uh, the chair, that they were able to work together. And they were also very excited uh, to let the um, customer know that these are the safe ones yeah. and these are the ones that uh, you should be riding. And they were able to work with us to get an official commuter stop. Um, so I really look forward to seeing more of that uh, interaction, um, you know, as a commissioner, hopefully you will be proactive and work with council member if we have situation that we wanted to reach out to you. Uh, but also I think looking at the, the issues with the drivers, especially um, taxi drivers, I myself also take cabs whenever I need. Um, but what happened, you know, with the app, with Uber and, uh, and all the app, uh, what I've seen is a lot more uh, issues with congestions and granted it's very convenient um, for the customers, but it really hurts, I think, the taxi industry because you have to, most of the time, you could get a cab in Lower Manhattan easily. Just get on any uh, corner, you can get one. Uh, but unfortunately, there are people who want um, the service right in front of their doors <laughs> or drop them off right in front of their office. Um, and that really causes a lot of issue. But I think that I hope that you will, um, you know, work with organization, you know, like Taxi Workers Alliance and with us in the council to find a way uh, to help these drivers make a decent living and to be able to continue to work in our city. Great, thank you, I promise I will. And. Uh you know, I live in Brooklyn, not far from Flatbush Avenue, so I'm, I've ridden the dollar vans, the commuter vans, and i um, familiar with those issues as well. So look forward to working with you. But with the dollar van, we have to find a way to help them legalize. I mean, like, even in Chinatown, we have the legal one and the illegal ones. Yep. Uh, so we got to really help them. Yep. If you want to make a living, follow the rules, and we will help you. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yep. Thanks. Council Member Traeger. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Kosowitz, and uh, congratulations, Mr. Kest, on your nomination. Thank you. Um, I, I really appreciate your uh, attention and uh, focus on making, you know, uh, on the livelihood of, of the drivers and making sure that we're sympathetic and empathetic uh, to the challenges that they're going through. Recently, the City Council uh, voted on a contentious piece of legislation with regards to um, wh wh whether you call it capping or pausing uh, for, for higher vehicle licenses um, to deal with this issue of congestion and come up with regulations and ideas on how to better deal with it. 
But one of the things that, have, that, have, that came out of the legislation was really this the creation of a new office or uh, a new f area of focus with regards to dealing with the fact that historically, and, and, and we still hear cases today, where particularly people of color ha are being denied service. In, in this day and age, it's just unacceptable. And so I, it is our hope and expectation that this new office that was created as a result of this legislation is given all the support and the, and the uh, attention that, that it deserves to make sure that this does just does not happen anymore. Um, so that's first and foremost. The, the other issue that I just want to bring to your attention, and you're from Brooklyn, I, I, I heard, so am I. There are times when we have been denied service if we're in Manhattan asking for a trip to Brooklyn and we're told no and get out of the car. Yeah. So, you know, this, this, this should not be happening. And, and so as we first and foremost, you know, are sympathetic and empathetic uh, to the challenges, significant challenges which they face, um, they would be better served with the public if they truly um, can every single day practice that type of equity and fairness and, and basic decency to everyone in New York City. And I think it's worth emphasizing, particularly when we're uh, considering a nomination to a new commissioner on, on, on TLC. This legislation will be reviewed within a year and we'll probably start circle back with TLC about what new ideas and propo proposals will happen. But these are some of the issues that came up during this contentious legislation. I'd like to hear your thoughts on them. And again, I congratulate you on your nomination. Great. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, th there is no place for that type of discrimination in any sector. And, you know, I spent all of my career um, fighting those types of um, abuses, whether it was by, by bankers denying loans to people of color or landlords denying um, uh, leases, et cetera. So I'm absolutely sensitive to those issues, and, and that is one of the things that I certainly agree with you and need to address. Councilman Trager, you finished? Okay. Councilmember Lansman. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I was very excited to hear about your nomination. Um, it's, you're going to have lots of issues to deal with as a member of the, the TLC. And the issues that are raised by my colleagues are, are all very Im important. And, and I know you're going to do the right thing. Um, I do hope that you, you, you take as your mandate on the TLC the, the mission to make the lives of drivers better. I hope that you will work with the Taxi Workers Alliance and with, with others and make that a focus of your tenure. I, and all my colleagues do, represent many uh, for hire vehicle workers, almost all of them who are uh, of whom are, are, are immigrants. And um, it's so important that there be someone on the TLC who um, comes to those meetings and those hearings and, and those conversations with that mission and that sensitivity. And I hope you will be that person. And I hope you'll do all the right things on all the other issues as well. But I want you sitting at that table conscious that that's why you're there. Yeah, I, I, that. I appreciate that, Council Member, and that is, that will be my mission, so thanks. Council Member Adams. I will also uh, echo the sentiments of my colleagues as well, and congratulations on your appointment uh, as one who represents Southeast Queens and the numerous uh, for hire vehicles and drivers, yellow cabs in particular, um, there is a heartfelt need um, for someone of your caliber and character to join the TLC. So as my colleagues have said, we really, really do hope that you are that breath of fresh air of sensitivity that is needed on the TLC. We congratulate you for the appointment and we really, really um, hope that you will be the voice for the voiceless out there. Thank you. 
Thank you, Council Member. And really, I, any advice or suggestions um, you have for me, for all of you, just you know, feel feel free to reach out. I just want to note that we've been joined by Council Member Vanessa Gibson. Ah. I mean, I think we'll call for a vote on Mr. Kess. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on rules on, <coughs> on Kess. Chair Kozlowitz. Aye. Gibson. Congratulations, looking forward to working with you. I vote aye. Thank you. Chin. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Adams. A vote of six in the affirmative, zero on the negative, and no abstention. Item has been adopted by the committee. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank okay. You. Thanks. Okay. Good luck. Now we will turn to the nomination of Mr. Rampachad to the New York City Planning Commission. I know Mr. Rampachad, as I call him Raj, <laughs> for many years. And oh, all right. we're just going to have Council Member. Appointment Mario for Mr. Vote. Kess. C continuation roll call. Council Member Matteo. No. That vote now stands at six in the affirmative and one in the negative. I know Mr. Rabishaj for many years. I've worked very closely with him when he was the chair of Community Board 9, and he has done our community justice. And I know that he will do the same on city planning. I have board nine in my district. I have a nice piece of it, and I believe Council Member Adams also has board nine in the district. So I look forward to working with you in another capacity. Thank you. And now, pursuant to the New York City Charter, the Planning Commission must consist of 13 members. The mayor appoints seven members, including appointment of commissioner chair. The public advocate appoints one and each of the five borough presidents appoints one, with the exception of the commission chair. Appointments to the planning commission are subject to the advice and consent of the council. Planning commission members serve for staggered five-year terms and may serve an unlimited number of terms. The chair receives an annual sal salary of $214,413. The vice chair, a salary of $65,121, and members, a salary of $54,150. Planning commission members have several responsibilities, including city planning for future development, assisting the mayor in developing capital programs, overseeing environmental reviews, preparing zoning and planning reports. Should candidate Rampachard be appointed to the Planning Commission, he will fill a vacancy and serve the remainder of a five-year term expiring June 30th, 2023. Mr. Rampachard, please confirm on the record that you will abide by the Conflicts of Interest Board guidance provided to you, and should you be appointed, you will resign from Community Board 9. No. Should I swear in first, or? You will resign from community Yes, I will. OK, raise your right hand, and let's swear you in. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, during the testimony you're about to give? I do. Thank you. And can you restate your stepping down from the community board now? Yes, I will resign from the community board right after the vote is taken. I already prepared the email. <laughs> so. Great, thank you. Do you have a statement you wish to make? Uh, yes, I do. Please proceed. Uh, good morning, Chairperson Kozowitz and members of the Committees on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. My name is uh, Otis Ram Rampashad, but everyone calls me Raj. I would first like to thank Queensborough President Melinda Katz for nominating me for this position. And thank you all for allowing me to testify you before you today. I would also like to thank, take a moment 
and acknowledge the late Irving Cantor, who served for 23 years in the position for which I've been nominated. If I'm confirmed, I will do everything in my power to maintain the respect, the integrity, and the tenacity that Mr. Cantor brought to the position. I've been a lifelong resident of Richmond Hill, Queens, and it will be a distinct privilege to represent my borough on the City Planning Commission. My parents migrated here from Guyana. My father came in 1969, and my mom came in 1971. They had two children, my brother and me. Like so many people before them, they came here to live the American dream. My dad worked for Liberty Line buses, went to RCA Technical School, and served the United States Air Force, stationed in Sumter, South Carolina. My mom also worked several jobs, for a time at a department store and then at key food supermarkets, where she went from being a cashier to a supervisor. Eventually, with her partner, she opened up a meat and grocery business in Ozone Park, Queens. It was our family business. I started working there when I was about 14 years old. 